Outer Wilds is often praised for its physics simulation. The devs specifically chose to simulate the solar system in real time, calculating the gravitational forces being felt on the planets at every frame, instead of just moving the planets manually around on rails. However, to have this physics simulation actually feel good to play in, they've made a few tweaks to the laws of physics. For starters, the planets are way too close to each other for them to not be pulling on each other with their gravity. You'd expect a simulation like this to be incredibly unstable instead of having the clean, unchanging orbits we see in the game. To get around this, the planets do not actually affect each other gravitationally. If we head on over to the interloper, you can notice this if you're standing on it as it flies past Giant's Deep. The gravity from the gas giant is enough to pull you off the surface of the comet, yet the path of the comet isn't changed at all. In reality, it would also pull the comet in. Using the N-Body Physics mod, we can see what the solar system would look like if all the planets actually affected each other gravitationally. You can see why they chose to not have the game play like this. The most egregious tweak to physics, though, is a change they've made to Newton's Law of Universal Gravitation. This law states that the gravitational force is proportional to the mass of the two bodies being attracted to each other, and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. The devs chose to instead change this equation to be proportional to just 1 over r instead of 1 over r squared. In the game code they refer to the 1 over r case as being linear gravity, and the 1 over r squared gravity, that is to say real gravity, as being inverse squared. The, the first name there is simply incorrect. It's, it's not linear, it's, it's just inverse. Linear would be f proportional to r, not, not 1 over r. Mobius, why, why are you calling this linear? That, that's not what linear is. Guys, what, what, what? I was wondering why they chose to do this. So let's try making all gravity sources in the game follow the 1 over r squared law and see if that looks any different. I wrote up a mod real quick to do this and everything looks pretty normal. If you ignore how messed up the hourglass twins are now, uh, I imagine it's just not calculating the initial velocities properly anymore, that's probably my fault. But apart from that, this, this is fine honestly. Similarly, we can try making all the gravity sources follow the altered 1 over r law. Again, it looks decent. The interloper, however, is getting a bit messed up, but this is just because elliptical orbits, meaning an orbit where it is shaped like an ellipse or an oval and not a circle, uh, in inverse gravity behave super weirdly. Uh, here, for example, look at this random orb I have orbiting Timber Hearth. Uh, Timber Hearth has 1 over r gravity, and this thing orbiting it doesn't follow a proper oval shape like the interloper usually does. Instead, it's weirdly processing around it. When I first tried to alter the gravity, it didn't work properly, uh, but it ended up looking kind of cool, so I'm going to show that here. I've made the planets all have 1 over r squared gravity, but I forgot to have it update their masses. This means the gravity became ridiculously weak. I'm able to just lift off the Adel rock and glide comfortably into orbit around Timber Hearth. Landing here on the surface, you can see gravity is so low that the display is rounding it down to zero. If I simply jump into the air, I basically start flying off into space. With a quick burn of my jetpack, I can send myself into orbit. Now, here's me setting the sun to use inverse gravity like the planets do. Remember, the sun was one of the only bodies in the solar system that used inverse square gravity. Again, I forgot to update the mass to be lower now that the falloff is lower, which means that the gravity is now much stronger. So let's load in, and I died. With inverse square gravity, the orbital speed of a planet is inversely proportional to the square root of the distance. This means that when you're orbiting far from the sun, you'll be moving slower. For 1 over r gravity, well, you can't just google what that would be since that's not a thing, so there doesn't really seem to be any results. So let's do a quick derivation to figure it out. So we start with that the force is equal to g times m1 times m2 divided by r divided by 2 squared 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 divided by 2 is that the speed is actually constant. So all the planets are all moving just as fast as each other, regardless of how far they are from the sun. And because I messed up the sun's mass, they're all moving ridiculously fast. 
Besides the sun, the Adel rock also uses 1 over r squared gravity, so I tried making it just use the 1 over r form as well. At first, nothing seems to have changed, then I get sucked off the surface of the planet. The Adel rock has inverse square gravity naturally, so it hardly affects you when you're standing on the surface of Timber Hearth. Remember, it falls off uh, qu quadratically, I guess, yeah, quadratically over distance, whereas the inverse is just one over the distance. However, to have the gravity on the surface of the Adel rock feel natural, they had to really crank up the mass of the outer rock so it would actually have some sort of attraction when you're standing on it. Again, remembering Newton's law, the gravity felt is proportional to the mass. If you double the mass, you double the gravity. Uh, they did much more than doubling it though. The mass of timber hearth used to calculate gravity is 3 million, but for the moon, it's 50 million. That's almost 20 times as much. However, normally the inverse squared gravity means this 20 times stronger gravity falls off really quickly, so it ends up feeling much weaker when you stand on timber hearth. Here, it is not falling off that quickly, so it is even stronger than the gravity that you feel from the planet itself. I, I, I really just broke gravity entirely here. In the end, I don't really see too much of a difference between the different equations of gravity. I guess in a solar system so small, it just helps a bit to have the planetary gravity be a bit stronger when you're close by. Specifically in the case of the Sun, it had to be inverse square for the interloper's orbit to not be processing all over the place, and for it to act naturally. And I suppose the Moon got the 1 over r squared treatment so that it could have normal surface gravity and only a slight effect on the objects on Timber Hearth. Anyway, I hope any of my rambling here made sense, or at the very least, some of the effects were interesting to look at. I just always found this to be a really interesting aspect of how Outer Wilds is made, considering that it gets so much praise for having accurate physics. Which, for the most part, it does. Just this is a very funny uh, approximation that they've included for the sake of better gameplay. Okay, bye.